What is up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle for what is rapidly becoming one of my favorite games of all time. A little game called Kingdom. It's a minimalist survival sort of, not even survival I guess, like a kingdom management sim where you try to last as long as possible without dying. Let me pick my king and my horse real fast. I don't really care who I play to be honest. So I'm just going to close my eyes and mash it on out and then I will stop. Woohoo, I'm a pretty pink lady. I don't know if I want to play a pretty pink lady right now. I like that guy right there. He's got a blue cape. I'm gonna pick, ooh, green cape. Green's my favorite color, sorry. This guy's it. A solitary king carries the crown to a new land. So welcome to Kingdom. Kingdom is rapidly becoming one of my favorite games of all time, like no joke. I sat around last night like obsessing about how I was going to describe this game and how I was going to play it on the channel because I've had it, I played it, I got it yesterday and I've already played 13 hours. Like that's, I'm telling you how much I have played this game. I had plans for the weekend, all gone. Every single one of them no longer existent. So the first thing we need to do, what I like about this game is that it's an exploration kingdom management sim in which you don't really know what anything does. You kind of got to poke things with a stick and figure it out. It's got that in common with a lot of games like, you know, Shadow of the Colossus and whatever. Let me go ahead and pay some money to light that fire. Ugh. I already know how to play a big chunk of the game right now. There is a win condition. You can't actually win the game. Press down real fast and recruit some peasants. There you go. Dawn forth your mumus of servitude and build my kingdom. It takes us two gold to buy a bow over here. When you buy supplementary items, your little peasants, they'll go and they'll equip them, and that'll give them a class so that they can walk around your town and actually be helpful. So there you go. He's now got a free shoulder pad with every bow purchase. He'll now go out and he'll hunt things and kill them and earn gold for us. And also, defend our civilization from nasty marauders who I absolutely assure you are totally coming. The hammer guys. The hammer guys, they get down with hammer time and their moo of servitude, and they become craftsmen. We actually give them a little bit of overalls and a do-rag, just in case they wanted that sort of thing as they helped us build our society. They build things for us, though. These little dirt piles right here, these become walls. And so if I go like that, it'll become a wall in just a minute once he hits it a couple times with a hammer because everybody knows that that is exactly how carpentry and construction work. You just hit it with a hammer until it's an actual thing. That was like 90% of my experience roofing. Just be like, swing the hammer, and so now we've got a little palisade wall. And that's all the instruction the game gives you. From here on in, we're going to be exploring the forest, finding magical ruins, and trying to keep our society alive for as long as possible. And if we die, if we have a bad run, the map is randomly generated. So sometimes you get better maps than others. Sometimes you get good maps. Sometimes you get bad maps. It is what it is. I'm going to install a wall on that side. Let's see if he's earning any money for right now. What's up, shoulder padded homie with your top knot? Oh, look at that. He's earning all kinds of cash. He's making the king look foolish right now. Shoot this bunny right here. Good for there. We got his bunny money now. It was his lunch money. Got to take it from somebody, though. Got to take it from somebody. These big rocks right here, they become watchtowers. And so if you wanted to have a watchtower, that's how you do it. But what I would actually recommend is that we hold down shift and start exploring the forest real fast. And what you'll find are these little camps where we can imbue more people with mumus of servitude. And so there it is. Mumus of working super hard until the day you die and also wielding the weapons that I tell you to wield. Because I feel like defending our walls is going to be pretty important. Oh yeah, he's paying out. I call him Pimp King White Pants. That's what I always call him when I was playing by myself. I'd be like, good Pimp King White Pants. How goes the tax collection? Very, very good, mine. Very, very good. I roll out to my peasants and I say, What have you got for me? Where you at? And they say, We on the corner, daddy, getting your money. And I'll be like, Oh, yeah, Pimp King White Pants. I don't know. That's what I've been calling him in my head. I seriously, I do this even when I play by myself. People seem to think that this is some kind of like hilarious act. It really isn't. It's just me playing the game and being goofy. I'm going to give you guys some bows. And so, there you go. I'm not going to throw bows right now because that's not a nice thing to do. I lack the gold to erect anything on top of that rock. But I promise someday... Oh, look at that. Now I have the money to get erections on top of this rock. Hooray! Erections on a rock! And so there it is. We have created construction. There's actually a company where I used to live that was called Masterful Erections. <laughs> it was called DC's Masterful Erections. It was a construction company. I was like, I can't imagine you get a lot of business that way. But to be honest, I call. That shit's hella funny. That cracks me up as somebody that used to work in construction. When you build a little tower, your little archery guys will get up inside of it. I like how the game has no mouse, too. Like, seriously, you can control the game with one hand in case you're into that sort of thing. I mean, very, very low maintenance. I should probably build a tower on this side, too. You make any money yet? Nah, daddy, I'm broke right now. You better come back or I'm going to put four across you, son. I'm going to put four across you if you ain't got my money by Monday. Plus 20%. Pimp King good pants. Pimp King white pants has spoken. Oh, there's the little guys that attack your city right there. 
they're weird little ghosty guys. I don't know. They wear masks. They look kind of like the little guys from Princess Mononoke. Or kind of like the goo guy that's like, ah, 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 from Spirited Away. The guy that conjures all the gold and makes everybody all crazy. They're kind of like him. They put on masks. The masks count as armor. I haven't figured out everything in the game yet, but I can actually help you play the game a little bit better because I have discovered some things, which is definitely better than discovering no things. After you've killed all the things that are coming, you can totally ride out into the forest at night. It's day two. What are we going to do on day two? I'm going to hire a few more peons. So you, sir, don forth the mumu. We also need to find the stone shrine. So there's a shrine out here somewhere in the forest that allows us to upgrade our tech from the wood age to the stone age. And believe me, you kind of want to be stone aged. Stone aged is pretty awesome. I like how alive the forests feel. I don't know. Some people don't like pixel graphics, but when I see stuff like this, it just makes me feel happy. I feel like our cape is like a towel that we just wrapped around our neck, Akira style. I'm like, Akira! Or was it Tetsuo that put on the cape? Who put on the cape? I don't remember. I think it was Tetsuo that put on the cape. Either way, it's been a long time since I've seen Akira. Oh, there's the stone shrine. Okay, so we're good, G. It takes us seven coins. Oh, and we had seven coins. Perfect. And so this is what you want to find first in your game. If you stay in the wood age, you will never make it. Like, seriously, it's going to be really, really shitty for you if you stay in the wood age. You're probably not going to make it past day 15 or so, at least in my experience. They overwhelm your defenses at a certain point, and so those guys are fine. You can only run the horse so much, so don't tire your horse out if you think you're going to be running from enemies. You chop down some of these trees, but you know what? I'm just going to leave it how it is for right now. What I like about this game is that... It's minimalist, but at the same time, it's all about exploration and discovery. On top of that, even when you die, it's not that big of a deal because it's a very lightweight game. Like, when I lose, I don't get mad. Like, it doesn't bother me when I lose in this game for some reason because building up is, like, part of the fun for me. There's some coinage right there. What you got? Okay, we're getting wealthy now. That coin purse is starting to fill up. Hey, builder guy, come over here and make this wall better. Now, be aware, your wall is, like, down until he comes over and builds it, so... Watch out for that. I need a couple more builders. So let's go two more builders. That'll make things go a little bit quicker. And then we'll also go with a couple of bows once I know for a fact. So they pick weapons based on whatever's closest. And so whatever they decide to wield, it's going to be whatever's closest to them. So just be aware that, you know, sometimes you might not. This game is a little bit non-committal in that you can't control everything. And so sometimes there's a chaos effect going on here where... Your AI is kind of do whatever they want to do. You can't give them direct orders. And so sometimes, yeah, they're going to do dumb stuff. And it's probably going to cost you. But that's part of the fun of the game. And it's kind of the same thing with like Dwarf Fortress and games like that. Where sometimes, yeah, the AI does dumb stuff. And you don't really have total control over it. But watching some of the shenanigans that take place, that's like 60% of the fun of the game. And so now we've got a much, much better wall out here. It's not that much better. I'm not going to build another wall because I'm worried we're going to get invaded right now. But, let's upgrade our fire as well. It doesn't take any builders to upgrade that, and so now we've got our own little tent city over here. It doesn't really do a whole lot for you, except that it opens up new shops. And so when you build your city a little bit larger, it opens up little shops that they can all be inside of. I need you guys to be archers, so please come over here. One of these guys is like dead set on being a builder. That's fine. You guys got any cash for me? What you got for me? Got your money, daddy. I'm like, oh yeah. Pimp king white pants, getting super rich off the poor because that's how nobility works that's how nobility works you become the king and then you exploit everybody to keep a never-ending engine of war flowing in the direction of your enemies it also keeps taxes quite high works out pretty well we've got enough archers right now to where i think we'll be okay for a day or two although don't rest on your laurels because on day five you get a really 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 huge invasion that usually wipes you out pretty resoundingly oh look at that so we got enemies coming in on this side please stop damaging my gate Rogers! On the double! Damn it. Archer needs classes. Yay! I killed one! Alternatively, you can bribe the bad guys to go... Stop shooting... Hit the bad guy that's trying to murder us, please. He probably won't be able... Ah, oh, that was so close. That was so close. I was so excited about that, too. I think they go away once the sun comes up. Oh, that would have been a decent shot if he had back... Ah! This is so frustrating to watch. There we go. All better. Let's go to the left and see what's out here. We don't have a lot of money, but I'd like to explore my kingdom a tiny bit and get a feel for how many people are out here. We don't have a lot of farmland, which is a bit concerning. These little rivers right here are farmland. This little guy over here that has this pack mule 
he will randomly refill either your bows, your hammers, or basically he'll refill any of your workshop or crafting stations. So you will get like, you pay him I think four coins and he'll get like 10 to 15 to 20 coins worth of value out of him. So we don't have a lot over here, just a little bit of farmland actually, which is concerning. You need farmland later on to generate revenue because all the game is going to run out eventually. And so I would highly recommend... We got a little village right there too. Okay, so we can hire a couple of cavemen to come and join us. We're like, look! Bask in the glory of my gold! I drop it upon you so that you will now be friends with me because obviously buying people's loyalty is the best way to run a kingdom. Alright, so we'll head back off to the right. It's going to take us a little bit. I love the music too. Such a relaxing game to play. Like seriously, I zoned out so hard yesterday, and I looked at the clock, and I swear to God, I sat down at three at the af in three at the afternoon, and I looked at the clock, and it was like one in the morning. I was like, "Oh shit, I have work I need to get done." Let's go ahead and if these archers have any cash for me, which they do, I'm gonna go ahead and upgrade this wall over here, make it look a little bit nicer. I'm also gonna put up another watch. I'm gonna pick up that coin, so you don't have to worry about it. Alright, you don't need to be encumbered by coin right now anyways. This little chest right here is to help you get started. It goes away after a while. I thought that it was taxes when I first started playing. And so as my city got bigger, I thought I was going to get more taxes. Does not work like that. That is actually a starter chest that makes your life a little bit easier by giving you a tiny bit of cash on the front end of the game. But it dwindles as time goes along. And that's the way of the game teaches you to you know, use the things that you have. It looks like the closest river is this one on the right over here. So I'm going to go for this river on the right. We should probably erect another wall at some point. Your soldiers will naturally advance to the farthest wall out. But by day 10 to 12, we want to take over this little camp over here. And we want to take over this river so that we can hire some farmers. Farmers, once the gold chest runs out and all the game runs out, farmers are going to be the only way that you're going to be able to make money. So... Be ready for it. I'm just trying to warn you and I'm letting you know what your priority should be going into the game. Having played a good 10 hours now. A couple of builders on this side may be able to get that wall up before anything else goes wrong. I'm probably just going to take a bunch more archers for right now. Did both of those walls get finished? Okay, so both of those walls got finished. The guys that are up on the tower are safe from being attacked by enemies. However, there are going to be enemies later on that can scoop them out of the towers, just not right now. I'll probably stop building walls right this second. I think tomorrow we should be able to afford some pretty good upgrades. But for right now, we're into the Stone Age. We're doing all the things we need to do. It's looking pretty good for us right now. We've got our priorities sorted out, and so I think it's going to be a good day to be king. You guys got any more cash for me? You got nothing. Oh, he's got one right there. Let it be known that if you give people weaponry and shoulder pads, they will then fought coins for you until the foreseeable future. So yeah, you see, it's non-symmetrical. So like, it won't necessarily, if you've got like, let's say that you've got eight archers, it won't necessarily put four on this wall and four on this wall over here. The way that you guarantee that it'll be even is by building up your towers and making those better. Otherwise, the archers just sort of wander around and do their own thing. Did we get attacked? Oh, we did. Okay, well, it's looking a little bit better on this side. Your carpenters or your little crafter guys, they'll fix the walls for you, so... If you're worried about that, should be alright. Today, what I need to do is I'm going to go out before the sun comes up. Uh, I may have screwed the pooch right here. I was going to go out before the sun came up, but... I'm going to build that wall up now that I know that the invaders are gone. And so the three little builder guys right there should be able to get something done for me. I'm going to wait for my chest to come back, and I'm going to try and ride out, and I'm going to hire as many peasants as I can before the end. There it is. If you can't get your chest to spawn, just go off screen, and it should spawn for you. There we go. So I'm going to ride to the left first, as hard and as fast as I can, and I'm going to try and hire whoever I can off in this direction. The problem with the leftward direction is that it's got the big kingdom sign, and so typically it's better to expand in the right direction than the left, because the big kingdom sign over here can kind of get in the way. Actually, it looks like we've got a river... It's reasonably close in both directions. I don't know which one I'm going to focus on for right now. Probably the one on the right still. But strategically, we're looking okay. Be careful in the forest, by the way. You can get attacked during daytime in the forest. It happens kind of randomly. It has to do with whether or not the little evil portals to Satan or whatever. We haven't seen them yet, but there's little portals out here. Go ahead and hire him up. Sir Yellowshirt, come forth and wield a bow in service of Pimp King White Pants. I'm thinking about changing it over to Good King, Pimp King, White Pants, just so people know how awesome I am. I do have a cape, after all. Infinite polo shirts for anyone that joins. He also rides bareback, and he's like, well, you know how I do. I always do it bareback if I can. I'm like, whoa, that's a little filthy for a PG-13 channel. You better calm down with that. Might have to ban you, Pimp King, White Pants. Like, hey, I am the king. You cannot ban me. That is not how this works. I am the main character. 
What will happen to the narrative if you get rid of me? Hey, give me all of your coinage. Good. And so now that we have coinage, the next thing I want to do is I want this wall to be erected in a fashion that brings me joy, happiness, and not angst. So we should have enough time to get that wall up and running. The builders should come running the second that they see it. Are all of my hunters out on the other side? Oh, that's unfortunate. Sometimes they don't split up in hunting groups very intelligently. It's just not a thing that they do. Still, we got three people at it today, which is good, because I think that's going to bolster our defenses slightly. If they can get that wall up to tier four, that'd be super fantastic and something that I could definitely get behind. I'm going to need to craft another couple bows. He's got nothing for me. What you got? Okay, enough for one bow. What do you have? You got anything? Gentlemen? Oh, man, you guys got nothing for me either. Okay, so we're not going to chop down any trees or do anything super crazy for right now. Damn, I need more coins. I need more coins! Is it day four or is it day five? Because it's day five, shit's about to get live. And you better duck and you better dive behind anything if you want to stay alive, so... I tried to craft bows, but I don't have enough for five. And that just doesn't jive. He's trying to shoot that rabbit, but he's standing in front of the wall, which means he's just hitting the wall over and over again. <laughs> Something tells me you are just not the brightest bun in the bin, buddy. Something tells me you were not the flakiest loaf. It doesn't sound very insulting, though. I don't know. My girlfriend likes Dutch crust. I'm kind of impartial. Dutch crust is okay. I'll take it. I mean, I just like fresh baked bread, to be honest. Don't shoot that bunny that's right in front of you, that large, human-sized bunny. That is an enormous bunny. That's like a bunny the size of a cow. Like, holy shit, that's a big bunny. Like, that's a bunny that goes up to the chest if with the ears of a horse. It's a really big rabbit. I'd be kind of worried that they would figure out that they could fight back. They're starting to get to that size of rodent. And so the kingdom's starting to look good. Kingdom is starting to look good. Hopefully we'll have east side hunters and west side hunters today. We may not get attacked, actually. I think the day before you get a big attack. Oh, nope, there they come. Oh, there they go. You guys are really, really good at hitting my wall and not quite so good at hitting anything else. The towers can go up higher than the wall eventually, but it takes a while to get there. Yay, free coin. Just like my coin purse only has one coin. That's a little bit disappointing. I must have had some affliction that required the other coin to be removed. I love how the coins trickle down into the pouch in the top left too. Like that's a major feature for me. It makes me really, really happy. It's little things that make me happy, but watching my coin and just be like, tinkle, tinkle. Okay, so we're on day V. We are on day V. This is the make it or break it day. If you haven't been hustling, this is the day that'll let you know. So what I'll probably do now, go right there, get another bow. They're out here killing just in the way that I want them to. We got anybody back at this camp over here? Hey, we got a little guy trying to hide in the bushes right now. No, I don't want to serve you. I don't want to serve you, King White Pants the Tyrant. Throw your tea inside the lift. I think this is a river right here. I don't know if it's a river or a lake or what it is, but... He's going to throw my tea into it. It's going to be very, very upsetting. I'm like, great. Now the fish are drinking all that super expensive tea that I brought for all of you out of the express kindness of my own heart. Fantastic. This is what happens. You bring people wonderful, refreshing beverages, and then they throw them into the river. They throw them in the river. I'll probably... Oh, I don't know. Stack him up a little bit higher. doesn't really matter. The tier 2 tower isn't going to do a whole lot for us, but you guys got coins? Give them all on up. It's that time of the week. Yep, Pimp King White Pants needs to go buy himself a 40, so you better... I mean, I I tried to teach Good King or Pimp King White Pants everything that I know about drinking malt liquor. He doesn't like to listen, though. He keeps buying the expensive stuff. He keeps going and bringing back six packs of Blue Moon. I'm like, what the hell, man? Those are like $14 a six pack. Leave that shit alone. You better go get a big box of Mickey's. You better bring it back over here. I kind of don't want to be out in the forest this far into the afternoon. It makes me feel a little bit nervous. So the point of the game, think of coins as like Sonic's rings. And if you lose all your coins, you get hit. And when you get hit with no coins left, your crown falls off. And if any of the enemies grab the crown, you lose. And that's the end of your little roguelike adventure. And so anyways, I don't know if I should hire this guy or not. Let's do it. Why not? He might do something good for us. He might do what's good. It's going to be day five pretty soon, though, so I figure what I'll do for right now is we'll ride on back. I think we'll wait for the big assault to come through. Once it comes through, we'll break off the episode because that means we've got another week or so. I tend to count the game in terms of five days at a time because bad things tend to happen, like, every five days. So, hey, you guys got one coin for me? It's better than no coins for me. Gary. 
You're no tax paying ass. Trying to build random things, subsidizing all of your earnings out here. Trying to make the roads better, Gary. And you won't, like, participate, won't jump in on the Commonwealth and, you know, add your expertise. Oh, it's so scary right now, but they haven't come back to the walls yet, which is how you know shit hasn't gotten real just yet. Hopefully, he'll grab a bow and then go wherever it is that I need him to go. It's possible the enemies, if they attack from the left, they're going to eat those guys that I hire long before they make it to the walls. Such is life in this situation. Sometimes it can't be helped. What you got for me? What you got for me? Where are my villagers at? Yeah, I don't think the villagers are going to make it. They are a little bit far out right now. Might have been a waste of two coins, but you know what? In the greater scheme of the game, two coins are not really going to sink or float you. It's kind of the long-term way in which you approach the game. Why does it always rain when bad shit is happening? It rained hella hard yesterday. We had a thunderstorm for like three hours. It's weird for California considering we're in a drought right now, but they said there's an El Nino year coming and it's just going to piss down for like six months straight. I don't know if there's any truth to that phrase, but... It's weird that we haven't been attacked yet. Maybe... Oh, look at that. He refilled my hammers. That would be a good thing if I totally did not need... I mean, the hammers are more expensive, so out of four coins, I got 12 coins worth of value. So, long term, that's a really, really good thing. But short term, I kind of needed these guys to be archers. And now they run into the first thing they run into. So now we've got a shit ton of builders that I don't really have a use... For. Oh, they're here. Did you guys make it? Okay, so it looks like they fended him off on that wall. Oh, good. You guys made some money over here, too. That makes me pretty happy. Builders will help out with that over there. I'm going to go ahead and upgrade that tower right there. That's going to boot him on out of it, but that's going to be the end of our first episode of Kingdom. I hope you like the game as much as I do. I am absolutely in love with this game. I'm not even joking you. In the 10 hours that I've played, it's easily jumped into one of my top 10 favorite games of all time. I am just enjoying the hell out of it. It reminds me of those games you used to get back in the day on, like, shareware discs that were, like, stupidly fun, but nobody ever bought them and, like, nobody knew about them. I don't know. I like it a lot. It used to be a Flash game, and so now they made a full version of it. The exploration mixed with just kind of, like, trying to survive and being terrified of every nightfall. I, I really enjoy it. I really sincerely do. I'll see y'all later. It's going to be available later this week on Steam, I think, on, like, the 21st. And so, anyways, I'll see you in the next episode. I do, everybody.